What up, peeps? Welcome to the Kiss Capids podcast. I'm your host, John Telewa, a.k.a. The Kiss Bandit. And in this show, we explore the key elements that shape our fulfilling existence, from health and well-being to financial success, meaningful relationships, and the pursuit of happiness. We cover it all. Our guests include experts, professionals, and everyday individuals who have remarkable stories to tell. Tune in to learn practical tips, gain valuable insights, and discover strategies for personal growth and transformation. Whether you're seeking to improve your health, build your wealth, enhance relationships, or find lasting happiness, we got you covered. Welcome to today's episode. I do have a very special guest today. This is so vibey. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So now, before we just start it off, first of all, I know we just, I reached out to you randomly on TikTok. TikTok. Mm. You responded probably like one of, the, that's one of the fastest responses I've ever gotten, like, from, and that was impressive. Thanks. I'm pretty active. I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> so before we just start it off, just introduce yourself, tell the people what you do, and then I'll take it from there. Okay, sure. So I am Caitlin Siandel. I am the co-founder and CEO of a tech startup here called Kungana Technology. And our product is Kuza. You guys can see us here. Yeah. Came branded. Um, and Kuza is a phone app that helps small businesses here in Kenya and eventually in East Africa, like manage their operations. Uh -huh. So we really focus on operational efficiency for okay. small businesses. So what was the inspiration though behind it? Because I'm trying to think of like anybody coming up with an app, they have to think about things that already exist and how like you'll just bring a product that actually stands out in the market that's already like tech savvy and filled with other applications. Yeah, it's been a long time coming and I actually had no intention of being an entrepreneur, like zero. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I am originally from the Bay Area in San Francisco, like around San Francisco in California in mm -hmm. the US. And I moved to East Africa in 2017 and I moved to go work for a nonprofit micro lender in a village in rural Eastern Uganda. So I was there for two years and that's where I got the idea of my company. And then I moved to Kenya at the end of 2019 to start it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, essentially in the village I was, my eyes were open to a lot of different things and a lot of different experiences, obviously moving from like the Bay to a village is like night and day. Huge contrast. Yeah, like the only thing in common is that there's people there. Everything <laughs> else is different. Completely different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Food, culture, people, everything. Experience. Mm -hmm. And so I was um, very like quickly awakened to like the intensity of poverty and how that shapes people. And also like micro lending, just caveat, we don't lend. So <laughs> I will say that throughout this just podcast. Just to be clear, just <laughs> to be clear. We don't lend. <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. We can talk about that later if you'd like. But For sure. Yeah, and just seeing all of the dynamics at play, because, you know, I think that poverty is like a very solvable, solvable issue. I think it's like man-made, so it can be man-solved or woman-solved in this case. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, people just need like more money. And because the job economy here and in Uganda is honestly terrible, it's super unhealthy. It's like the only way for people to make money and to have, I think, like a chance at financial success and abundance is like through entrepreneurship. Yeah. Which we see like over and over again. It's like even if you're employed and salaried, you have a side hustle. True. Somewhere. Because you can't just say that you're relying on one, one yeah. thing. So we just want to, it was there that I started to see the importance of having like a small business as well as a healthy business, but then also like the emotional side of money and business and all of that. Cause money is like super emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Money, money is not what we used to think when we were kids. Mm. Cause once you grow up, it comes with so much around it. Yeah. Management, literacy. 
and investments yeah future and, plans yeah and also like expansion right it's like you have to re rewire your brain mm -hmm. like if you've only experienced poverty or scarcity like even if you like even if you grew up middle class in kenya yeah but if you have been hammered in like a scarcity mindset it's always going to feel yeah like a struggle and yeah. so i think that's like the other part of our business and why we're so active on social media is to also start to bring awareness around like the mentality of money and the mentality of business. Yeah. Yeah. And especially I think before even dive into like most of the questions that I already have down, uh, speaking about that, like what are some like of the challenges that maybe you noticed small business owners like, you know, in Kenya are having where like now your application will come in handy because I responded to also like a specific video that I had seen. What uh, video was it? iPhone Street Kenya. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because yes. that, that's why, you know, talking about like just businesses and building after scaling up after like probably five, six years, some of the challenges that can actually just come and shake things around and affect you in a very... Big way. Yeah. I mean, with iPhone Street Kenya, that seems like it was all they're doing. Like, their demise was their doing. It's like, uh -huh. you can only lie to customers so for so long before you get caught. Yeah. Um, And it was, like, super avoidable. Like, the video that I saw about them was, like, a guy bought a Starlight model, but when he plugged it in, it was an iPhone Red. And yeah. I was like, people will still buy an iPhone Red. Yeah. So why are you... Yeah. You know? Like... Anyways, but, but what was your, your advice was integrity and like clear communication and customer support and like yeah. transparency and honesty. I think those things get you really far just in life. And like they're usually the harder route, yeah. but it's always going to make your life easier in the long run. I think for small businesses, I mean, small businesses here face a lot of challenges. The reason why we focus on operations so much is because. When you look at everything that like business owners want to do, mm -hmm. right? Because like everybody has goals for their business. They mm -hmm. want to stay, like they don't want to stay, they want to grow. You can't grow your business until you are operationally efficient because like your operations are your foundation to do everything. Mm -hmm. And so having a good grasp on your operations and transparency will also allow you to like build your team and also start to build trust. Cause like trust is a huge issue here in general. Oh yeah. And I think like a lot of these emotional things will block growth because you just can't build a business by yourself. And like the views and the goals that like our users have for each other for themselves. I mean, it's, you need a team. Yeah. So it's like the trust, like technology, because technology is your friend. It can be your friend. We should really be curious <laughs> about technology. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like also how do you take like mitigated risks? How do you kind of tune out all of the outside noise? Because there's also like a lot of hating here. <laughs> I, I, I and get what so, you're saying. so, you know, it's uh -huh. just like, it is a very tough environment. Like, True. it's pretty tough. So, yes, it's I'm, like... I'm a small those. business owner. And even when yeah. you're talking about like just trust and collectively building a team and managing them, like that's one of like the worst things or experiences I've had. So I, so that, of course, just the same way you've said, scaling up would be tricky if you're doing it alone, it might take you way much longer because if you have more people on your team, it's slightly easier. And of course, growth is much faster. Yeah. The other thing that I have noticed as well, and this, this isn't for every business owner, obviously, but just kind of like a trend, mm -hmm. a general trend is that it seems like a lot of business owners in a way want to be hands off in their business. So they want to be already like, 10 years down the road, but they're mm. not. Yeah. And so like in order to get to a place where you can be more hands off and in a more supervisory role, like you need to have the operations and the foundations in place to get there. And True. so a when structure, right? Yeah. And so when you're <clears throat> building your business, like you do have to be 
hands on and you have to be like the director and the leader and the guide and the vision. Yeah. And you like with that comes hard conversations, confrontation and like my experience with the Kenyan population in general is that Kenyans are tend to be more avoidant than confrontational. Like mm. when it comes to interpersonal relations or when there's something wrong. We tend to like, I've noticed a trend of avoidance, not of like confronting. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And so mm -hmm. even being able to have like the understanding of like, how do you confront your employee? Yeah. And like give con constructive criticism and fire them if you need to, because like employees will sink your business if you don't. That's very true. And so it's like all of these things go into having a healthy business. And so we want to just use as many facets as possible. You know, like with our product Kuza, you can have clear like oversight into your operations. When you tune into our socials, you can start to get like more of an educational aspect around business. And it's mm. super localized to the context here. Yeah. Cause I've been working with small businesses here since 2017. Yeah. And yeah. like very, in very hands-on ways. So I'm, I'm aware. And even to, to touch on that, <laughs> just because you've mentioned that now, of course, I also have to bring up like, you know, you've said like in your platform, you already have over 500 registered businesses. And that's like a really, really good number, like in terms of research, experience and everything. But to someone who's not yet involved in, in your structure or just how the app works, can you just like take us through how like the basics of how it works. Something I download, do I go to a website? I know it's an app. Do I get it in like Apple Store, Google? You know, just take us through those basics because I'm sure you'll use the best terminologies. I don't want to butcher <laughs> anything in any in any way because I'm not like that in that techie world, but I understand how apps work and everything. Yes. So Kuza is a phone app only, so we're not available on like a laptop or a PC. Um, you don't have to buy any hardware, so it's super affordable. You yeah. find us on the Play Store. You, you search Kuza. Find us on the Play Store. We're the green money key. Mm -hmm. um, John will tag us in all of For our sure. things. So that's, don't you guys worry. That's the logo that's on the App Store <laughs> as well. Yes. Okay. Um, and then when you download Kuza you and register, you will start to, you'll get a two month free trial. Mm -hmm. And then after that, our foundation plan is 268 Kenya shilling a month. And we don't charge in the month of January. You don't charge in January. Yes. Mm -hmm. huh. So, sorry, I'm just looking for it on the app store yeah. right now. Um, so then what we do is essentially, so we integrate with all mobile money providers. So we don't attach to a bank account. Like we have no access to your money, um, but we essentially can read the receipts of a payment. Mm -hmm. So that way we can automate your sales processes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, it gives business owners a little bit more transparency because we know there's really right now two ways that business owners operate. They either leave a kabambe in the shop Yes. And then their employee can confirm, but then the business owner can't. Mm. Or the business owner has has it. Yeah. And then the employee has to call them every single time mm -hmm. to confirm that a payment has gone through. So now with Kuza, that essentially that whole process is linked and everyone can see in real time when a payment has gone through. Um then you can also easily record your expenses. We have inventory management, so you can manage your inventory. We're really made more for product-based businesses, not service-based businesses okay. right now. And then anytime you sell something, your stock automatically updates. Anytime you add mm. new stock, we do all those calculations on the back end. So let's say you have two chairs in stock, you add 10, Kuza will show that you have 12. You can manage different locations. You also can get reports on all of these. So like sales, expense, profit and loss, stock, mm. transaction report for all of your locations Everything. or by individual location. So we, um, and we're constantly improving our product. Mm. So yes, that's in short. 
how it actually works. Yes. And even now with that, from my curiosity point of view would be um, when you've just mentioned like, you know, more product based. So I'm guessing um, if I'm selling a product, is it scanned? And no, so we or, don't or how do, do you, like or what's, any... What's the technology like behind that? Because I'm trying to think of how an ordinary Monainchi would be like, okay, this works for me, so I have a bunch of products. How will I be able, or how will you guys be able to actually just... Yeah, so your first invent, like when you first use Kuzi, you're going to have to do your initial stock take. Mm -hmm. You would have to do that with any product, okay. like with any inventory management tool. You need to do like your baseline, which is your first inventory stock yeah. take. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It's tedious. But once you do True. it, yeah, you're done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just enter in everything. So you enter in the name of that item. You enter in the selling price, the buying price how many are in, you can also set a stock alert and then you save it. Mm -hmm. And then now that item is in the system. So it's, we don't do scanning like barcode scanning. Yeah. We are trying to stay for the, for the time being, we're trying to stay away from people having to buy more hardware because oh. it's expensive. Okay. And then also what they would need to do, like if you wanted a barcode scanner, you need, most likely, they would need to make their own barcode. Yeah, yeah. Then they would need a printer mm. to print everything. Then they would need to put those codes on everything. And then they would need yeah. to scan it. I don't think a small business owner wants that headache. Well, right? or? yes, I don't know. I mean, I think that, I personally think no. I think that there's also, it's super interesting because people see what other businesses are doing and then they're like that's what i need yeah. even if that's not actually what's best because then you also have to look at like where these like where our users operate right so like we have a hardware store in kamkunji mm. he is managing like around 1400 different products not pieces but products products yeah within kuza wow kamkunji doesn't have regular power yeah has, you know, there's issues. Just so many obstacles that in the course of the day, you'll definitely have to come across. Yeah. And so that's why we focus on having a phone app, because it's like you always have your phone with you. Mm -hmm. Most likely your phone is always going to be charged. And yeah. even if your phone is offline and you're recording sales, the second that you get back online, Kuza will upload and update everything. So you okay. don't lose anything. Yeah. The other thing is that, you know, with our market, mm -hmm. they all are using shop attendants. Yeah. And when you look at the demographic of shop attendants, um, you really have like a, a variety of a type of person, right? You have some people who have like little to no formal education. Doesn't mean they're stupid. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Or you have people who have like high levels of formal education. We want to be as inclusive as possible. And this is another really great feedback that we've gotten is that even shop attendants can use Kuza and don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, yes, because we just... you. So it's an easy to use app. Yeah, we mm -hmm. want business owners to like be able to reap the benefits of operational management almost instantly yeah. and very affordably. Like if you buy a barcode scanner and then your employee drops it, and then you can't afford to buy one right now. What yeah. happens? Yeah. Or, it affects your whole operation. Yes. And just how you're managing everything. Yeah. Or the power goes out. And the power's out for maybe, maybe the power goes out for three days, depending on where you are. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. Or you're in a place and you have like a laptop, but now that laptop, like, let's say there's like a leak and your laptop gets ruined. Or your employee doesn't feel comfortable using a laptop. Or there's like a virus on your laptop now that you need to update and you don't want to do a software update. Or you take your computer to some person who says they can fix it and then they have it for four weeks and they don't fix it. Like, you know, so it's like the simpler, yeah. the better. True. Especially here. Very true. And it's like the more steps you have to go outside of yourself, it just brings in more chaos. And we want to reduce. To reduce that. That. Mm -hmm. And give you just more control and visibility. Yeah. So that's why we, yes. You've simplified the application, right? Yeah, yeah. And then another question would be, what did you just mention? Like, um... I don't want to forget my chain of thought. This was a very important question. Yeah. So, of course, you do have, like, all these uh, 
small business owners like in your how would you call it catalog or re- registration or form in our community like in, in, yeah in, in our your ecosystem. in your in your ecosystem so how did you manage to like get all these people was it easy was it tough because like you said Kenyans are a tough crowd as well you guys from are. the word go from the word go I'll be but like, I like nah. you guys <laughs> you guys make us work for it we appreciate it um yeah, yeah. I mean we it was pretty much myself so right now we're still a really small team we're we're a team of two it's myself and my co-founder Ken mm. Ken is Kenyan okay um he's really overseeing like the product and building it and the dev side and I am doing like everything else so we have yeah it was you know I've gone to a lot of events mm-hmm. I've networked I've done cold calling um yeah you know, just what, doing a lot of... What, what would you say was, like, your biggest challenge in that process um, of just getting people to be on board with Kuza? Well, I think there was a couple challenges. Like, first was, like, actually creating a product that really fit the needs of the business owners. Mm. Like, when you look at other apps in our space, um, you see that they try to kind of silo off their operations. So they only build a product that addresses one side. So maybe it's only bookkeeping or mm. maybe it's only inventory, but you can't do that with a small business. Like you need to build for everything. Yeah. Also because tech is supposed to make your life easier, not more tedious. So you need True. to address everything. So that was first. And then second, yeah, you know, just like, it takes time to build trust. So it's a balance of being efficient in like brand awareness and like getting our name out there and like me actually going to introduce myself to business owners and just showing up. Like yeah. I have called so many business owners and been like, <laughs> Hey, can we just meet for a chai mm-hmm. or can I come to your shop to show you something like whatever you feel more comfortable with, you tell me and I will do it. Like, yeah. where do you want me to go? I'll come to you. Like, I don't care. You yeah. know, like just tell me because Trust issues are so severe. Yeah, we, we've had the worst experiences. You know, know, just establishing yourself and it involves money, people, all those things. Like, I think just having a functional system might have exhausted people before even you get to a point where you can say you're comfortable. Exactly. And then mm-hmm. also from my side was just also understanding how to communicate things. So, like, when there's an issue, how to essentially mitigate expectations. True. And also we've had to do a lot of sensitizing with our users about what does it look like to build technology? Because it's not like you tell me there's a problem and then we are like, dee dee, okay, it's yep. fixed. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so letting business owners know about the process so that they are aware and that they don't feel like we are ignoring them or mm. sliding them in any way. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just being really transparent about, you know, when we make a mistake, how we're building stuff. Like, we want people to feel included in the process, especially, like, this first kind of haul of users who are taking a risk trying us. Yeah. So, yeah. And did you, like, even in that process, did you, like, ask around about, like, things that people are going through, the hardships, before now you structure like what your app will actually do to solve those issues yeah i mean when we went into beta a lot of it was just if we went into beta with actually just like a simple bookkeeping tool um and then we wanted that's when we got like a bunch of feedback and then anytime we introduce something like new it's usually i have spent a lot of time in a business to understand what we need to build and then we translate that into a, a feature in Kuza. So for example, like before, well, when we released our stock inventory, when we... Oh, no, no, I need mm, just oh, for, for my notes, yeah. Um, when we released our, uh-huh. our inventory, yeah. like I was like, okay, now's the time where I need to go do a bunch of stock takes with business owners to see what their experience is. And I did so many stock takes mm. for free. Oh, and from a business owner, that's the only thing that I think, like, you know. That's how you're going to get people to let you yes. help. It's like, you don't yes. pay me, let me come, let me help you count, let me just watch you use mm. so I can understand what we need to build. And then 
that's also like relationship building. Also, like when someone sees that we're serious. Yeah. You know, everything just kind of translates energetically. Mm. So that's, yeah. True. And we always like, I always try to listen to what users say. And I think that's the most important part, right? Yeah. It's like we, I kind of consider myself like a facilitator. So like my whole business is not about me. Mm -hmm. My business is about our users and getting them in a place where their business is making them as much money as it can. And even with you saying that, have you noticed like any impact in some certain businesses that are already involved in your application? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've had a couple of different stories. We've had stories of business owners having to fire their shop attendants. Sorry, but it's good. You know, it's like you want to get rid of the 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 business. You have to take care of the business. Yeah. 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 And that's something that I tell business owners all the time. I'm like, look, tech is not where we can never control a human. Yeah. But what technology can do is it can make you aware of issues a lot sooner than if you did not have technology. And Mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. We want to identify problems as quickly as possible and then deal with them as quickly as possible. Mm. Like, there's no such thing as a problem-free business. That's true. Yeah. If that's what you're looking for, just don't go into business. Because I think that's also taking us towards the direction of probably AI, if I'm not mistaken. Would yeah. you consider it AI or no? I mean, I think there's... what Would we consider Kuza AI or, like, human control? Mm. I mean, I th- I just think that... I don't think we should be too worried about AI right now. I think it still has a long way to go. Because I'm guessing, like, you know, all, all, some most of the things that, you know, people used to do or are still traditional, let's say a traditional business person who's established but has other small businesses, they're probably used to the old ways of doing things. Mm. So with what they feel of, they've heard about AI, if they feel, they hear the word Kuuza being phone-based, and like doing all these things like just on your phone you don't have to go there physically to just supervise people and everything i mean doesn't that feel more like on the ai side no because you cut down on people though right well the point isn't to cut down on people right the point is to find the right people so Mm. yeah like those business owners who fired shop attendants they've hired new ones yeah okay yeah because you just yeah i don't think I personally don't think we need to worry too much about AI. <laughs> really what Kuza is, it's like yeah. a pretty, I mean, it's just what technology is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you oversight mm-hmm. and transparency Yeah. so that even if you're not in your shop, you can see what's going on. True. Like you just open your app and you can see, oh, this is how many sales we've made today. Oh, here's some Mpesa transactions that don't have sale details. Now let me call my employee and be like, Confirm. why haven't you added sale details mm. to this sale? It gives you, like, just transparency. And then when we have transparency, we can give direction. Okay. Would you say there are some specific type of businesses that you can see have a bigger number that are using Kuza as compared to other ones? Yeah. Like, which businesses really use it the most? So right now we have a lot of, like, beauty and cosmetic stores, boutiques, hardware and construction I'm trying to think, baby shops, Hmm. Um, those I think, general shops, we have cereal shops. So I think those those are the top users the last time I checked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And also like just um, on on the impact maybe, hold on, on the impact stories that I had actually mentioned that you were talking about, like, you know. Oh, yeah. And another, another, a lot of other feedback that we get is that it's just business owners really like our reports, Mm -hmm. that they can just open up a report and see the sales. They can open up a report and see their profit and loss. They can open up a report and see their expenses. They can open up their stock report and see what is their stock value. Mm -hmm. They can see what are their top selling items and they can see what are their highest revenue generating items as well. And you can see it for like the week, the month and the year. So we give, and it's literally just click. And it's there. And it's there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Technology. It's not even magic. It's tech. And what, what strategies would you say you're using currently? 
because you know I had space I have specific notes and I would want like you know to just touch on them as much as I would want to freestyle like a lot of things but what strategies would you say that you're using right now to still get more people on board because I think like I've noticed just from your TikToks and just social media in general you're really putting out like a lot of content yeah that's what we're focused on mm-hmm. we want we need people to see the product in action. We need people to see who we are, to start to trust us and to like vibe check us. And I think social media is a really great way to do that when you can put like a face and a name attached to like the company and the product. So right now we're really focused on like brand awareness. And when you're a small business owner and you think to yourself, man, I really need help with like inventory, you think of Kuza. Yeah. Oh, I really need help with my accounting. You think of Kuza. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wish I knew what my employees were doing in the shop. Are they even recording sales? You think of Kuza, like that you just think of us. First time I have a problem, any problem that arises, I know this yeah. Kuza can solve my, my yeah. situation. Yeah. Oh, I wish I knew a little bit more about like HR, like an HR strategy. You think mm-hmm. of us and you come to our socials. Like we are just, we want to be the go-to place for small business owners to just help them thrive in any way that we can. Like, we are not about gatekeeping. We're not about, like, hoarding information. We want, it's like, we just want to give, give, give. That's what I noticed, uh, what was very unique about, like, even your social platform and the type of content you had posted. And I was like, you know what, let me just try and see if they can respond and we can have a chat. Because I was like, you know, most people, like, you won't see the faces, they wouldn't communicate about taking like a user through A, B, C, and D. And I think you're doing a good job in, in, in that. Well, thank you. You're doing We've, a good job. We're in trying, that. you know, yeah. we're doing our best with what we, like with who we are and what we know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like our intention is always good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just, I mean, we want people to know us. Yeah. Like we want, even when our community gets to a million plus businesses, we want people to feel like they somehow know us and that there's some connection and that we've added value into their business, even if they have not spoken to us directly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, another question about the the monthly payments that you mentioned. It's two two eight two sixty eight. Two so, two sixty eight. Yeah. So our foundation plan is two hundred and sixty eight shilling a month. Mm-hmm. With that, you can manage three locations, three employees, four admin, Mm -hmm. and 200 different items. And then if you need to add anything, you can add more of any of those things at a very small additional cost. Mm, So, what's, What's the cost? You know, you know, you know, you know, Kenyans would I be know. Kenyans um, would have to, but you know, we yeah, can we so can like, still go back to that if yeah, you if you back. need to confirm because you know you can put out a number and then they say yeah you already said that price. But I can give you guys like an example. So that hardware store in Kamkunji, yeah. he is managing one location, two employees, one admin, and fourteen hundred products, and he's paying. I think he's paying like around a thousand shilling a month. Okay. So mm. our whole intention is to be affordable. Yeah. And when and you, you don't want to be a financial burden. No, true. Very <laughs> true. Very true. Because you know, uh, I'm thinking like oh, as a business owner, you also have like your other utilities that you're trying. So you have to have a reason to prioritize on on this as well. And also just to clarify on how you make the payments, you. Everything is done through the app. It's through the app. Yeah. And then you have like uh, M-Pesa, mm-hmm. an M-Pesa option. Yeah. So Kuza will prompt you when it's time to pay. You pay through uh, M-Pesa, like within our app. So it's app. not like subscription based way. It just deducts from your no. card. Okay. Uh, everything is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, everything. It's like you. <clears throat> from like our operational standpoint, we've made our life a lot more difficult, but we've made business owners' lives a lot more better. Co- comfortable, yeah. yeah. Because at times somebody would even be taking a break from a business and they've co- forgotten like they have the subscription initiated yeah. and it's 
still doing the deductions and no, stuff. So we don't do that. Okay. So it's like you you're prompted. There's no contract. Mm. We if you stop using Kuza, mm. <clears throat> we will hold your data for six months, and then before we delete it, we tell you we're gonna delete it so that you know. Ah, yes. To get a notice. Yeah. Kind of. And then all of we don't sell data. So your data is yours. Mm. Um, yeah, we're not in that that business of selling your data. <laughs> okay, what what would you say are like some other unique features that or adaptations you've made to actually tailor the app to the Kenyan market? I mean, honestly, just everything that I've already explained is super tailored to this market. Like all mm. of our Mpesa integrations, the fact that we've like essentially have allowed you to replace your kabambe to give you like more transparency. Yeah. Um how we do stock inventory and we're also in process of improving that. So yes, cuz that's the other thing that I just want people to know is like tech. When you look at tech, it's like an ever growing and changing thing. Yeah. So it's like what you're seeing now is not going to be the same Kuza that you see even in six months. Like we just are constantly improving it and making it better through the feedback of our users. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what would you say are like maybe your future plans for expansion? Because yes, you're already at 500, but I'm sure if you had like 5,000 as well, that would be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I want us to be like the go-to you know, the go-to product for small business owners in East Africa and eventually like in the global South, if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, before we build anything, we just think, how is this going to help our users make more money? And we tend to focus on like efficiency because efficiency helps you make more money. Those things are like they handhold. Yeah. And so I don't want to talk about all of the exciting features because I don't want you guys to get too excited because um, <laughs> yeah. it's a work in progress. But yeah. just know that we are like hyper aware of all of like the fragmentations in how businesses operate and how you guys sell, you know, like online deliveries. Mm. Even if you're using rent to shelf, we're very well aware of this and we are trying and constantly working to allow you guys to integrate everything. Um, even trying to figure out how we can help you guys get into different markets. We've started to test that, but that's... That's still yeah. still in the works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just, everything that we do is literally around, like, how can we help you guys make more money? That's good. Where, where do you see the future of, like, let's say, small businesses going forward with just such business apps? Yeah, I mean, I think small businesses, once they become a bit more organized... Um, and a little bit more self-aware mm -hmm. uh, that like, I mean, already small businesses are kind of like the lifeblood of the Kenyan economy, but I think it'll be an even stronger like essence. Um, and I think in general, you, we will see like a healthier workforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then another one, and I think this was like just from the write-up that I don't want to miss. <laughs> why, <laughs> why, why are you so focused on small businesses? Because I'm just trying to think about it as why. Why would you be so focused about the small businesses when there's a big piece of the cake in bigger, bigger establishments? Because I don't care about bigger establishments. <laughs> I mean, eventually, sure, you know, like we're we're a company, like if we get there, yeah. we get there. But to me, there's like way more interesting problems to solve with small businesses. And this is just a community that I know and like deeply appreciate mm -hmm. and like that are fully missing their whole potential due to like them not being able to like operate their business in like an efficient way. Cause when you have just a notebook, honestly, you are limiting yourself to your growth and your income potential. Like mm -hmm. I promise you. And so, and again, like going back to financial, like abundance and security, it's like most for most people here, it's going to come through having a healthy small business. Yeah. 
And so we, like, I want every single one of our users to eventually be able to not only afford but feel comfortable Uh to take a two-week vacation. Like, (laughs) once we get, once I start hearing that feedback, I'll be like, okay, we've we've done a good job. You know you're on on the right track. Yeah, because I think, too, when, also just, like, with my experience here, you know, there's just so much there's a whole nother side of life that people aren't able to experience due to financial constraints. Mm. And I just think that that's like a shame and like a problem. And we want people to like, to also have like a deep immense joy in life. And that is tied in some ways to money. And so to say that it's not, I don't think is being realistic because like, especially when I, you know, was living in the village. It's like, if you can't afford to go to the hospital, that causes a lot of internal suffering and pain. Yeah. And so let's first help people get all of those financial needs sorted. And then we can get to the next level, which is like, okay, now we can do all of this. Now we can start to give ourselves other experiences. Like maybe instead of taking a matatu every day, I'm going to take an Uber or a Bolt. Mm. So I don't have to worry about my phone getting stolen or like getting harassed (laughs) on a fucking matatu, you know? True. Or like I want to, like I do want to go to the coast and I don't want to feel guilty about that. Yeah. That's okay, you know? Or I want to be able to give my family money and also be able to do things that I want to do. Great. All of that's going to come through a healthy business for most people, you know? Sure. So that's why I fo- focus on small businesses because it's like these are, this is the market that has the most help, needs the most help, is the most interesting to me, yeah. and that I know pretty well. And I just want to see people financially thriving. That's and awesome. yeah. And I just, I like, I just, I've grappled with this a lot because I obviously have my own privilege that I come into this conversation with, you know, like I'm white, I'm from California. I'm not only from California, I'm from the (laughs) Bay, like, and like I am middle class, Mm -hmm. like even depending on who you put me next to upper middle class, like in the middle class conversation that's based in the U.S. and yeah, a lot of experiences have come because of that. And so... I don't think that those, like, and money is just involved in everything, right? Like, unless you are a monk and you decide (laughs) wholeheartedly, I don't want material things. Yeah. Sure. But most people don't You'll have to deal with it. You'll have to deal with it at some point. And it's just like, you know, so it's like we want people to transition also in a mind, from a mindset of like, scarcity into a mindset of abundance Mm -hmm. and like really believe that this is like their human right and just like their actual true essence is to be in one of like abundance and security yeah um yes and it's a you know yes i I, I, I get get it and i've had these like conversations mm -hmm. you know i've been come face to face a lot with my own belief system because I've had these conversations like with women, with women in Kibera. Yeah. And so it's like, and I am very real. I try to be very real and honest about everything because I think that's like the only way to like help people like first identify where they are and also just like bring a grounded approach to the conversation. Yeah. Hmm. But like, you know, I did this exercise with this group of women in Kibera who are like all young mothers, single, not easy life. Yeah. And um, I asked them, like, you know, why do you guys want money? Because we don't want money. We want the things that money can buy. True. You know, it's like if I just gave you 30 million shilling, you wouldn't just put that money in the bank. You would, like, buy land, you would build a house, you would buy a car, you'd go on vacation, like, whatever. And that's all of that is good. And so then we drilled down, like, what do those things represent? So, like, one woman was like, oh, I would want my mom and me to move to a nicer place that's, like, safer. So, like, money represents security. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, can you do that right now? And she was like, no. And then I said, what can you do right now? 
to make you feel more secure in your current situation that you can also afford. And then she's like, buy a better, like, deadlock. Or, mm. you know what I'm talking about? And I yeah. was like, that's your goal. Right there. Because it's step by step by small, small, yeah. small, 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 Get small. Get to that and then scale it up a bit. Scale it up again. Yeah. To things that you can actually manage. And I think that's why when you hear even like, like the Powerball winners or people who may win like jackpots, most of the time, just because you don't know how to handle money and you have no direction with it, you might still end up being in the same situation. Most do go broke in like a most. year. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. That's very true. And so, yeah, these are like the things that we want to talk about and have like a plan to talk about on our socials. It's like you need to also feel comfortable with money. Yeah. Because most people actually don't. In what way? Like you'll hear some contradictory beliefs around money, right? So you'll hear like, oh, I want money. And then when you ask someone, okay, what do you think of rich people? Mm -hmm. They say... They're all evil. Uh huh. <laughs> and then, do you want to be evil? <laughs> no. But so, now you're associating... So why do you want money? Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of contradictory beliefs. Yeah. And so we have to sort those out because money's not evil. Money is paper. Paper can't be evil. It's just a fact. And if somebody turns a certain way because they get money, that has nothing to do with the money. That has to do with the integrity of the person. True. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, yeah, because I also say this. I'm like, there's bad people who have money. There's bad people who don't. There's good people who have money. There's good people who don't. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Very so true. Yeah. we have to also start to come to terms with our own relationship with money and the dynamics at play, mm -hmm. it gets very complicated. And it's like a very heavy conversation, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, and, and you realize even just with business, it's not just about buying, selling. There are so many other factors that go on even with the individual probably at home, and they have to balance it out just so that the business, they can make the right business decisions which are not emotionally uh, based on something else that's happening externally. Yeah, but everything is based on your emotions. Like we mm. are going to, I'm going to be releasing a video about how do you get comfortable spending money? Because mm. as a business owner. Do you want to mention a bit, a, bit, a bit of on that or, or no? <laughs> Just something small exclusively for the podcast yeah. as we wind up because I'm seeing we're almost at you okay. know, our mark. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I just think as business owners, you can't only be, we can't only be comfortable with receiving money. We have to be comfortable with spending mm -hmm. because you can't, like to, in order to make money, you have to spend money. And as you move through the levels of growth through your business, your expenses are going to get bigger. Yeah. You have to be comfortable with spending money and you can't hoard money. And this is like, you know, it's like people just want to have like huge revenues and profits and like no expenses. And that just is not mathematically possible. It makes no sense. Yeah. Yes. It's like you will always have to spend money. So we want to feel comfortable and grateful and intentional with spending money and how we spend money. And what do we spend money on? And how do we take small financial risks in our business? And all of these things go into business and management and growth. Nice. And then now, as we're just winding up, uh, where do you see Kuz up in the next five years? I mean, I am hoping that we have, you know, like, who knows, maybe a million plus monthly active users um, that we have spread into different countries that like are interested in our product, um, that the product is where I see it visually, and that we're just continuing to help people make more money. Like that's, that's cool. yeah, and that we have data so that when we can tell you, oh, you know, a business is after using Kuza for six months, they're making like 10x what they used yeah. to. Yeah. And it's because of this, this, and this, and this is what they're spending. So it's like you're getting your money's worth. And more success stories out there attached to Kuza, that would be nice. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> we're definitely working on and, it. And then yeah. just team-wise, do you guys hopefully do you expect to expand? Because I'm guessing like just uh, is it like a two two person operation that can be crazy hectic? Yeah, we're so working hard. I don't even hard. want to imagine how hard you have to be. Because you can't take a break 
because something might need to be addressed. Somewhere. Yeah. So we are planning to expand our team like towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, which is mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now's the time. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> but you. I do want to hold any other questions that I do have maybe for my audience. Like when they watch, they can give me feedback. Please. And, you know, with any questions that you have about Coos as the product, because that's our main focus today. And you just don't know if they'll have other products coming out. Is there any other products you're about to surprise us before the end of the year, probably? Well, we just need to wait and see and see how the things flow mm -hmm. i have learned to not make any promises when it comes to <laughs> releasing features yeah so um but what i will say is how cool it is right now it is very good to help you start with your operations and that anything that we release in the future is just going to be improvements mm -hmm. so at least download us and check us out you get a two-month free trial there's no contract no pressure Test yeah. us out. Follow us on all of our so socials. Contact us directly. We're super friendly. We're here to help you guys. You can so. give your social media handles. Yeah. So on Instagram, on TikTok, we are Kuza Tech at Kuza Tech, and then on Facebook. Oh, also on YouTube at Kuza Tech, and then on Facebook we're at Kungana Technology, mm -hmm. which is the name of the company, but our product is Kuza. Um, yeah, so find us and you'll tag us, right? Of course, for sure, for sure. Uh, easy, how, easy. How, how can how I How could it? you not? How could I not? <laughs> and then I know, like, this is just something I'll just put you on the spot for this because it's something that you already do on TikTok. Mm. You always give tips, quick tips in short videos. If you were to give, like, just small business owners, like, five quick tips on how to run their business more efficiently, what would be the five tips be just generic? I would say if you guys aren't using technology, find a tool that works for you. Even if it's not Kuza, find a tool that works for your business. Um, then I would say that start to feel comfortable having hard conversations with your employees that need to be had. I would say that most likely figure out how you can take an even more hands-on approach in your business because before we go hands off or start to release the grip, we usually the grip has to be intense. Um, I would say make sure to take breaks and rest. That's mm -hmm. super important. Find rest. Rest is sacred. So find ways to rest and like detach yourself from your business for a little bit. And also, yeah. if you guys aren't on social medias, start to create some content because it's super important. That's Make, how I got on this podcast. That's and, and this was just a few days ago. And mm. here we are already like just having this conversation. And you never know like what it could grow into, where we might bump into each other again, and what plans might be there for the future. Exactly. Oh, and the last thing I would say is try to really harness uh, an outlook of optimism. Mm. And like really start to like believe and trust in yourself and your capabilities as a small business owner. Even if you don't have like a formal education, even if you didn't go to a top school, like honestly, none of that matters. None of it matters. You just have to trust in yeah. yourself and your capabilities and start being like a little kinder to yourself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. So, I mean, thank you for coming to the podcast and, you know, I wish you all the best in like just the the journey of, you know, your company, the product, anything else that you might release. And of course, like Guza is exciting and I can't wait to also like just see like what it actually more entails in detail because now I, I can download and actually now contact, you know, the co-founder in person. Exactly. Now, like on text and just like, yo. What's happening here? And, you know, I, I, I hope, like, you know, you get just more people who can jump on the wagon and take it to further heights as much as it can. Well, thank you. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to come in onto your podcast, get yeah. in front of your audience. You're welcome. Let people know a little bit more about who we are. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm super <laughs> humbled. And I can say proudly say, like, you know, this episode was sponsored by... Kuza. 
Yes. Download us. Oh, also you can man. I forgot to mention this, but you can also manage customers who buy on credit with Kuza. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're here for everything. I forgot to mention that. That was a new feature we just released. So that's probably Ooh. why I forgot to mention it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, and that's a very important feature to yes. have, you know, especially during now the economic times and everything. Ah, it's crazy. It's very unpredictable. Exactly. Anything else you want to drop off before we finish it up, we mm -hmm. close it up? No, just thank you again, John. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's been <laughs> fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I hope like to see you in the next, you know, few months. Let's say maybe after six months we can do another episode. That sounds good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. The Kiscapades podcast is your gateway to holistic growth and personal transformation. Together we'll unlock the secrets to living a life of health, wealth, love and happiness. So make sure to tune in every week and join us as we explore the essence of what it means to truly thrive. And lastly, show us some love and support in our social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, basically all the social media platforms that, you know, support podcasting will definitely be there. Even with the short clips and reels, you can find us there. And lastly, don't be shy with feedback, suggestions, or any questions that you might have in regards to the episodes or our podcast. It's the Kiss Capades podcast. Goodbye.